I was just scrolling down and I seen a post. We got to talk about this. And he was saying how women who pay all their own bills don't listen to what no man tells them. And that's true. I feel like if I'm in the house paying all the bills, you don't got no say so in the end, especially if you're not in there helping with the bills. That's a different story. Because you got some of these men that live all damn day, watch TV, and feel like if they helping out with the churn here and there, not even doing the full duty, expecting you to work, pay all the bills, get off, change diapers, see about these kids. If they sick, see about them. And they just play with them every now and then. The whole time they got their feet kicked up, watching TV, expect you to cook, clean, and do all that. It is going to be 2024. <laughs> Bitch ain't on that. Period. And I feel like if you ain't paying no bills, you shouldn't have no say so or nothing. Your opinion doesn't matter. Now, it is a difference if y'all both was working and paying bills and struggling to pay for your kids' child care and you thought that it would be better for your husband to stay at home with the kids. And most, if he's staying at home, he should be doing the cooking, the cleaning, the laundry. And when you get home, you should be resting because you're the one going to work every day and paying all the bills. You shouldn't be clicking and cleaning, paying all the bills. No. What are they doing that at? Shoot. And if you're doing all that, then guess what you got? You a bum. Don't stay in that relationship think that nigga going to change. Guess what? He's not. He's going to always be like that. And if you kick him out, shoot, them niggas know what to say to try to get back in and act like they're going to change their whole life over and do everything different when they come back. Then you get stuck in that situation. And now you're going through the same shit over again. And he still ain't changing. He's still doing that if not worse. Not only is he not helping with the bills, the nigga hanging out in the streets living his best life. Like, what the fuck? No. No, no, no. Let's normalizing men being providers, men taking care of their kids, men taking care of their household. Let's normalize that. Men being a part of their kids' life. Normalize that type of stuff because what's going on in the world now is really sad. All these mamas raising their kids alone, paying their bills alone, and then you'll have a nigga be quick to corner come up and land your shit. Like, bro, no. Shoot, now when we date, make the, make, let's set some standards. When we date, them niggas, they need to have their own place, not living with their mama. Because if he living with his mama, he don't know nothing about paying no bills. He don't know too much or nothing. If you want a grown man, this is the one of the red flags. Red flag number one. Stand with a mama. Ah, keep going. Red flag number two. No car. Ah, red flag number three. No job. <laughs> Those are some red flags that just off the ripple. X him out. If he ain't, if he ain't got none of that, you don't want him. If he don't have none of that, you don't want him. It's becoming more and more often where these men they can't handle their emotions. They sensitive as hell. Not only is they sensitive, they taking your life. Because they mad because they don't want to do that. Or maybe they can't get far in life because of their own personal things. And everything is always blamed on you. You the cause of this and you the cause of this. When I was growing up, I was taught that nobody else is the cause of anything that's going on with me. You control everything that's going on with you. So, if you talk to somebody nasty or treat somebody nasty... Don't expect them to help you. How you treat people, that's how they treat you. So we not. it doesn't matter if they your family. Cut them off too. It's going to be 2024. People is changing. People is evolving. And if you got somebody in your life that's not evolving, leave them now. Don't stress yourself out and break yourself down, stressed out, because you're trying to help somebody get somewhere to where they don't even want to be. Whole time. They jealous of what you got going on trying to bring you down. That's crazy. That is so crazy. Speaking on this shit because I've been through it. I 
And I thank God was able, thank God that he was able to bring me out in that situation. Yeah. It's hard. It's not easy. When you done been with somebody for years and you see you see the potential that this person could be. It is very hard. But sometimes the red flags be there. Not on the red flags. God seen so many flags. If everybody around you telling you the exact same thing about this person, listen. Don't think that everybody lying or everybody jealous, feeling some type of way. Listen. Because over time, you will start seeing that person for who they really is. And another thing, when a person is mad, however they act when they mad, that's how they really feel about you. That's how they really feel about you. Because when people get mad, they true colors come out. They start telling you how they feel. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we just need to start taking these red flags serious and just be serious with life. Because it is so many women losing their life to these men for nothing. Nothing is that serious to take somebody's life because they don't want to be with your ass no more because you ain't doing what the fuck you supposed to be doing. You get what I'm saying? And some of uh, people like you ain't never even knew what was going on. They even knew they even had a problem or nothing. Like, what the hell? You get what I'm saying? So it's a lot. You get what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, you can't love somebody and you want to take them from everybody who they love. That's not love. That's why when some of these niggas they be like, oh, I love you. How you love that girl? You don't love nobody that you talking to like trash. That's not love. Love don't hurt. You can tell that they never been loved properly, so they don't know how to love you. They've been in chaos all their life, so they taking you to chaos because they think that's normal because shit, that's all they've been through all their life. That's all they've seen. That shit ain't normal. And then you looking crazy like, what the fuck? Yeah, uh-uh, that shit ain't normal. I just seen the story, and it was so sad. Pretty little girl. She was just going to get married, and he killed her. He killed her. We finna watch this together. And you starting to see more and more shit like this. And I'm, and I'm speaking on it because I have been through... I have been through domestic violence. And that shit ain't what's up. I'm telling you, that shit is not what's up. If you going through that, get out. Get out. Move in silence. We got to start. We got to start getting more programs and stuff that help women get away. But even when you help them get away... If she ain't ready, ready, ready to get away, she going to end up back with him because they very manipulating. They good at um, acting like, oh, I love you. I want to change my life around. I miss my family. Da, 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 da. And one little wrong move, set them up, be right back in the same situation. You can watch Domestic Violence. Man, I swear for God, when I be watching the movies, I be like, dang, that is just how it is. That is just how it is. And it's just sad to see people losing their life and they got kids like, how could you love her and you took her away from her kids? Now them kids got to grow up without a mom. Like, what the hell? I've never seen so many domestic violence deaths in my life. So if that nigga don't know how to talk to you, he don't respect you, done deal. Another major one, watch how he is with his mama. Because if he don't respect his mama, he don't respect nobody. I'm telling you, if he don't respect his mama, what the fuck make you think you're going to be different? Tell me. You're not going to be different. You're going to be treated the same fucking way. If not, even worse. Because he don't give a fuck about nobody. It's fuck everybody. You get what I'm saying? We just got to open our eyes.
Mm. That domestic violence shit is for real. It got me, like, I don't think I'm like, a program or something I could create to, like, help moms get away. The only difference in my situation, I had a good support system, family. You know what I'm saying? So, if I pick up the phone and call, somebody finna call. You know what I'm saying? But people was getting tired because I would kept going back. Hoping that things would hoping that things would change. And it never changed. It got worse. It got worse. It never changed. It actually got worse. I wouldn't wish that shit on my worst enemy. I swear. How you think you done been through a domestic violence relationship? Mm -mm. Have a minor argument and you hit hit your boyfriend and then he push him. Mm -mm. Like the manipulation, trying to turn you against your own family. Because they don't like his ass. You get what I'm saying? Just oh, he, he stuff that you thinking y'all got past, be holding on to it, rub that shit in your face, the cheating, all that, all that it plays your major part. I just seen a girl. She was um on Instagram going through the same thing, and she keep recording. Come to find out that nigga was smoking crack. Let me show you. This is the story. Now we're going to watch it again. Um, what is going on? Oh. 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 Oh, there. There you go. They grow up without their mother and the man. Uh -uh. Three little girls now forced to grow up without their mother and the man she was set to marry is now in jail, accused in her murder. She's going to be truly missed. Raven would have done it for us. So we're doing this for her. What they're doing is raising money for Raven's three daughters, her twin three-year-olds, Jolina and Dalia, and her 10-month-old, Talia, who as of October 30th will all grow up without a mom. Raven was tragically killed allegedly at the hands of her own fiance, shot and killed on a driveway of a home on Weyburn Street in Detroit, a shooting that was seemingly out of the blue. I did get a chance to talk to Raven and she was happy. That only adds to the anguish her parents are feeling. For her not to be there in that picture is devastating. An all too familiar feeling for Rodney and Carla who back in March of 2017 Spoke with me following the death of Raven's brother. You see that? Yeah, and if you see the pictures, then they look happy. Oh, they look happy. You definitely can't judge a book by its cover because people will be looking happy and really be miserable. You just never know. So if you ain't heard from your friend, you got friends and stuff, reach out to them. Call them and check up on them. Ask some questions. You know, I can say my best friend was there through the whole way. Because a real friend, she ain't going to judge you. She going to tell you her opinion and how she feel, but she ain't going to judge you. Oh, yeah, that's so sad. We got to do something. We got to, this got to stop. Like, them three kids finna grow up without their mama. That is so sad. It is very important for kids to have their mom in their life. Like, oh my God. Now your grandma got to raise you. We all know it didn't say if the kids was in there when it happened. 
Nej.